current conversations that are going to happen, and you're going to migrate from conversation to conversation. Uh, Patricia's group is going to start. Um, oh, well, Jesus's group is going to talk about startup and sort of like how we came about and that sort of model and our organizing how we do that now through Facebook and email um, and the spaces that we use and, and that sort of thing. Uh, Patricia is going to be talking about next steps and how we can connect our regional alliances so that we can uh, communicate with each other and hopefully try to affect some national change or a national movement of some sort. Um, and then my group on that end will be talking about programs and how what we do is our convening, our writer circle, and the workshops that we try to offer um, our colleagues in the field. So that's going to be how today works. We're in the smaller group so that you can get to the meet quicker because each group only has 10 minutes. We're going to try to get everybody out in time for their shows at 8 o'clock. Um, and is there anything you want to add? So yeah, right now it's a little uneven, so we're going to count off because it'll just be faster. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so this will be group one, I'll be group two, and then Armando will be group three. OK, so if you want to okay. start. One. Two. Tres. One. Two. Is there a final? Three. 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 during one season, and then we put together a small convening, like a little conference, um, which about 120 people came to um, at East LA College, and that was in 2013. And, um, and then so we, we talked about the work, and we had um, a scholars group, an artists group, a producers group, that's, so we engaged the conversation from those entry points. And um, and so we surveyed them, and then we called the, the results of the survey, and we saw that writers wanted a space to write about whatever they wanted. It didn't necessarily have to be Latino themed or about Latinos or whatever. They just wanted a room to play in. So then that's how the writer circle came about. And so, um, Christina, if you want to talk a little bit about the writer circle? Yeah, we had anyone interested in joining the writer circle send us a proposal of a new play that they wanted to start. And from all the applicants that we got, we thought it was eight. And we wanted to make like kind of a well rounded group. So it's uh, very experienced playwrights to emerging playwrights. And what we did was meet twice um, a month for three hours. Yeah. For three hours, and each time they rotate, bringing in about ten pages and share. We have different activities, um, like exercises, so as they develop that one play. Two. We also have Richard different Watt. guests come in. Like Just join everybody, join the group. So we had Ruby Sanchez, Edina Fernandez, Alice. 
So, um, I'll be adding to that. We're coming in to work with them for one of the sessions. So, they had a total of 14 sessions and we had seven artists. So, they had one artist a month. And each one served to like maybe be responded to the work and gave them exercises or advice on uh, being a playwright in the field or like I'm stuck with this one scene or you know, challenges that might be tough. So, working playwrights because all, all of the playwrights that happen to do that, they each had a production of that season. So it, that was something that was really cool is um, getting you know, produced, playwrights that are getting produced now. Um, so that was that. Um, then we closed the, the sessions that where we all get together, and right now we're leading towards a, uh, a reading series that we're going to do in January here at the RATC. Um, over one weekend, all eight plays are going to have a directed reading. So we're each going to pair them up with a, a director, and they're going to have you know, the day the rehearsals, and we'll, we'll read them over one weekend. It's going to be a marathon weekend of reading. Um, I just realized that we didn't all introduce ourselves. So um, I, I'm Armando. I work at Red Cat. I'm the administrative coordinator there. Um, and I'm from Los Angeles. So, uh, I'm number three. <laughs> My name is Nancy Garcia Loza. I'm with Alta Chicago, one of the alliances as well. Um, and I'm in Semillero in our first launch of the writers group. And I'm the newest person in there. So I'm writing my first play as part of that group. So I'm Chicago based. I'm Bado Garcia Crow. I'm the Austin, one Texas director, actor, writer, teacher, artist. Uh, and I have run. I've uh, been a music director in years past, but I'm an uh, independent artist. Okay. Really? really good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Daniela Toll. I'm um, an actress, writer a little bit, a little directing, a little producing. So, um, but you know, we in New York, I, that's where I live. Um, my name tag fell off. So, <laughs> but um, they tend to compartmentalize there. So it's like mostly acting there, but I'm also directing and a little little things. And, and uh, part of uh, we we started a group. There a couple of weeks ago, like a, a, we're start, starting to form like a New York alliance, and, and it's exciting. Um, so they're all like we've, we've been meeting just a couple times and, and trying to form some sort of a group that'll that'll do various things, sort of pull us together and, and provide support and, and a place where we can showcase our work and also support each other and check into like issues with um, casting and different things, making sure that we have a place to, to get support, as, whether it be actor, director, writer, things like that. Carlos Uriona, from Buenos Aires, Argentina, originally. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, now in Massachusetts with the Wallet Theater in Argentina, I was a member of a, an ensemble called Diablo Mundo, and I was one of the founders of the Movimiento de Teatro Popular, which started during the dictatorship and then extended. In Rosario, we had Campos, Norberto Campos. And um, so we are now I'm, I'm, uh, we created this group, and it's mostly rural. It's, it's a mix of people from all over the world, and we're in, in rural Massachusetts. We mostly do physical theater, and uh, we integrate the land, and we also tour. We have uh, indoor, sorry, indoor spectacles. No, no, no. I, I, need to, I need to do it. Okay. Well, uh, for the, thank for you. For the sake of, sake of time, we'll do, yeah. we'll do name and yeah. organization or a group that you're representing. And if there's a regional alliance in your region, um, we'll stick to it. Oh, my goodness. Name, regional alliance. I'm Pat Rodriguez or Catherine Maria Rodriguez, depending. Um, and I'm at Baltimore Center Stage right now. I'm the Artistic and Dramaturgy Fellow, so I'm in my second year of two. I'm also a freelance dramaturg. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm from New Orleans originally, so connections there as well. Where you can do conferencing live. I'm Michelle Mani. I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm a resident artist with the Crowded Fire Theater Company. I'm, I'm a teaching artist there. Um, and I'm also a member of a group that's just starting up in the Bay Area called, we call ourselves Baltan, which is the Bay Area Latino Theater Artists Network, started by Maricela over there. And so we're here today to try to figure out how to really massage this and bring it up to something. Thank you. 
I'm Madeline Garcia. I'm at UT Austin. I'm primarily a dramaturg. I'm graduating in May. Um, and so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's who I am. That's what I do. I'm uh, Herman Barofi uh, from New York. Uh, I work for representing, representing Yati Theater in New York. Um, and we have an alliance over there of theater companies. We have nine theater companies in New York. Oh. Um, my name is Jaime Martinez Rivera. I'm from New York, New York. I work for a theater communications group. Um, it's a national service organization for theater. Um, and uh, apart from that, I'm also a lighting designer and an actor. Oh. Carlos Flores, founding director at Teatro Chicano de Laredo. Uh, been around six years. We produce, we produce our own original work about the border issues. Uh, and right now, we've been the last, last two, three years. We've tried to form alliances with uh, Alta, Alta's Austin, uh, Teatro Vivo, also High Park Theater, uh, and a number of other theaters in the Austin area, also San Antonio and the Valley. And one of the reasons I'm here is, of course, to network with as many companies as possible at the national level. Great. So Jesus will be covering like how we started out, so you'll get that information there. One minute. Okay. So, um, any questions on, on how we do what we do? I think we're, we're doing conferences annually now, and we survey the group and see what, what sort of's coming, um, and then we start working towards the next year to have it be that, thematic, thematically. That's how we handle that question. Um, just to add back to what you said, like we had started this in a year group in Atta Chicago, so I'm part of that first cohort, um, like for lack of a better term, but our, it's identical to what you guys are talking about. Yeah. It was eight, eight people, you know, we accepted submissions, eight people got in, same thing, twice a month, same time, or three hours. I feel like, did we, like, talk to you? I, I don't think we actually connected, but Isaac and I have spoken about okay. how, yeah, I think he's over there. Yeah, how he saw the program. And yeah, it's like identity. And right. So, and it's and as a participant, as, as a participant, also like developing my first work, it's it's awesome. And my background is not like I don't have theater talent in my background. So to be in there with a range of writers, like, it's been uh, it's been a total education that I didn't have to pay fifty thousand dollars for each year. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> but we won't have to do the introductions every okay. time. So because um, we travel in our same group. Yes. Oh. When you talk about your organization is with a budget, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm with Red Cat, so professionally that's like my day job. Um, our model now is we're all volunteer based, so we get together on our free time on the weekends and just sort of put together what we can. Um, the conference takes up a lot, so we plan that further ahead of time and we divide up the work so it, it doesn't always work out that way, but we try to divide up the work so that it gets executed, um, but the writer circle is something that's been taking up the most time. Christina has been great, and she's um, volunteering her time and so All right, all right, guys, pay attention. This is so exciting. Everybody's like, Woo! I know we don't want to switch, but we're going to make you anyway. So next yeah. step, uh, this group is going to shift over to programming to talk about uh, with Armando. And then this chef is going to move with uh, Jesus. Oh my god, wouldn't it be easier if you guys do it? Seriously. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. Like, seriously. Wait, but like, seriously. No? It's not easier? Okay. I mean, I really think it's easier. I think, I think, I think, I think these are chick being like, I'm trying to get it. Yeah. Listen, Isaac. Okay, guys, see you. Hey, okay. Okay, guys, see you. This is the three Garcia group. I think we have like the powerhouse. <laughs> Okay. 
So there are um, three arms to the programs, what falls under programs that Latino Theater Lines LA does, and they are um, conferences and meetings. Conferences and meetings. So um, at, at the beginning, Kinan came down and we held these town halls. Um, and we gathered questions and listened to what people were, were asking for and what they needed. And so we, one of the things was that they didn't know each other's spaces and they didn't know each other's work, what people are doing and, and what the shows are about. So we formed a little cohort um, of, with artists and scholars and administrators, producers, um, to engage the conversations from those entry points. And we, we took a break from the town halls and then it shifted and formed into a conference. So in 2013, we held a one-day conference sort of um, event where the cohort reported back on the kind of work that happened in the season prior. And, and then we were able to talk about sort of the, the kind of questions that, that Jose Luis is trying to engage with this festival, of like aesthetics, and what themes people are talking about things people are talking about, what people, what people are, are creating. And so um, that was the first one. And then we, we sent out a survey, again, asking what people needed and, and what they wanted. And um, one of the things was a space for playwrights to sort of explore what they wanted to um, and then just have that safe space. And, and not necessarily the work has to be Latino-based or Latino-themed, but they wanted a room to play in where that was a given and, and that they could explore and play. So that's how the writer's circle came about. Um, they, over seven months, did 14 sessions, three-hour sessions, and um, we had seven visiting artists come in. We had Luis Alfaro come in and listen to uh, work um, and respond and then give feedback and advice. Uh, Evelina Fernandez, uh, Rose Portillo, uh, Alice Tuan from Kill Arts. And um, I feel like I'm, I'm missing some, but I feel like we're going rapid fire. But, uh, so that that's the circle is closed. The, our regular sessions, and now we're um, Christina's working with them more one on one. She's a facilitator, dramaturg of it, and so um, we're pairing them up with directors and doing directed readings of them in January. So we're working on relaunching the program. Um, we had eight playwrights this round, which is prob probably a little too much for for the room to handle that much, you know, reading out pieces out loud because we would read work pages every session. So the next go around, I think we're, we're looking at six playwrights, four to six playwrights. Um, and the, the visiting artists have been really excited about the program. They like being there. The, a lot of them wanted to come back, but all the sessions had been booked and like structured. So um, we're, we're looking forward to having some of them return and recycling in new people um, next round. Uh, and then um, and we handle the, the conferences in a similar way where we, we survey and we see what people want to talk about and then we start working towards building that for the next year. And so this last year, um, the themes that arose were LGBTQ, having that space for Latino LGBTQ uh, performance artists to, to talk. Uh, theater for young audiences uh, and uh, Spanish language theater. And, uh, Design. So we had a session that was for designers where they, they actually they formed three groups and, and one of them had a lot of resources but not not a lot of people and some, like so sort of emulating the field and non-designers came to that session and learned a lot more about like what it is that designers go through and, and that sort of thing. So um, that's sort of what we do. Um, if you have any questions, we can talk about those. Um, but let's let's jump in. So is there anything anybody would like so to So this is this is programming? Yeah. So what's the or is it what we want to talk about or the topics that we want to what we want to see. So the, I think we're research sharing. That was the, that's our model. Um, if you have questions about how we do what we do, we can talk about those. If you have a regional alliance in your region, we can um, listen to yours or what's similar, what's different, what's working for you. Um, and if there's something that you need advice on, we can do that. So when you're saying programming, it's, or is, that, is it how we affect the Latino theater commons? No, it's it's the how the alliance like our alliance has programs that, that we're sort of falling into putting up. So um, so those are our programs. So the theater community within your region. So with with um, uh, these are models that we've done in Chicago within the last year. Uh, 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 um, we saw a surge. 
It's okay. Alta Chicago. Yeah, the Alliance of Latino Theater Artists Chicago. Um, although it was founded several years ago by Tania Saracho and Ricardo Gutierrez, um, within the last year we saw a surge of young and emerging Latino theater makers come into the city. So within the last year we had a town hall and conference, much like the, the LTAs, where we took the temperature of Latino theater in the city of Chicago. From there uh, we had a general unified audition where we pulled in all Latino actors into the room and had casting representatives from all of the major regional theaters in the city, in, in addition to casting agents and representatives. Mm -hmm. So we had how many actors? Um, total we had about 50. 40, 50 yeah, yeah. And then we also have a Timiero. And, and so so we did that, so including the Steppenwolf and Goodman, whatever. And then in the same thing with, with um, the LTAs, we also wanted to create a space for early career Latino playwrights. So modeled off of the Goodman's Playwrights Unit, we created a, a Latino writer circle to develop a new play over the course of nine months. We are in our midpoint reading right now. And um, and then we just had our town hall convening 2.0, where now that we've had a year between identifying what the temperature was in Chicago, now we identified action items, created task forces focused on visibility and awareness, artistic, um, community and unity, and mentorship and fostering to help make create like actionable things so that within the next year we have something to report back on on what's working and what's not. It, what has been beneficial for us is that we found a large institution to be to house us. So Victory Gardens Theater houses Alta Chicago. So all of our meetings, all of our convenings, everything is is held at Victory Gardens which alleviates like a huge amount of stress and, and strain from the organization so we're able to focus on the activism. Yeah, so we're, we're working with East LA Rep, Jesus' organization, so all of our meetings are held at East LA Rep and the writer circle sessions are at East LA Rep. And we're looking into migrating some of that here to the LATC and sort of sharing the love around to the different spaces. That yeah. I'm Sara, um, I'm from Bravo Theater in San Francisco and um, Bay Area Latino Theater Artist Network. And um, the network, we're almost a year um, and we're kind of at a point where um, we're trying to Two minutes. figure out where we're going to start, like where's the best place to start. Like. Mm -hmm. They're live streaming so they can see. Yeah, can you shift over? Um, and uh, so I'm really curious, really, you know, hearing more about all the different programs and where you you like where the the start point is because we were like, do we want to do a big audition call? Do we want to do? Are we building a director? Like, where do we go? I mean, and we we do have we are have, starting at a great place because Brava is housing us because mm -hmm. um, Brava identified there's a huge gap in Latin theater in San Francisco um, there's no theater company um, that we can really identify um, you know and then it's it's and it's not we're not just saying it's Bay Area you know it's the greater Bay Area so we have members from El Teatro Campesino Teatro Vision in San Jose. We're trying to reach out to like Marin. You know, we're trying to be really broad. Mm -hmm. um, but really, like, we're really curious. You know, we're going to be meeting with uh, um, one of our friends who is a consultant. She's going to help facilitate the meeting. We're kind of like get some goals and mission and vision and, and hoping that can start steering us. You know, because we were having potlucks and, and we're getting together. Um, we circulated a survey that um, asked, like, very specifically, like, what do you need, or like, in your in your professional experience, like, what sort of hole we can fill. The, those weren't the questions, but like, um, those were the kinds of things that we were asking, and then we looked for resources and a way to fill those in. And so um, that's how our program sort of developed. It could be different for you. The the questions could take you in a different direction. So I I thought it would be. Um, great to connect with you because um, Seattle is sort of in the same situation. There's a lot of things in common, I think, between Bay Area and Seattle. So it's all the beautiful water everywhere. Um, but um, so today I'm interested in starting a Northwest Regional Alliance, but it would be great to learn. We're also at a starting off point. 
So a, a theater company that I'm artistic director for <laughs> did it the first um, Northwest Latino Regional Theater Audition. And I think that's something that could naturally be a regional alliance. We did it because there was not a regional alliance, and we also participated in the 33 Festival, which was a nationwide Latino reading scheme. So I think if there are some concrete initiatives like that, like regional auditions, which I hope to see become a national model. Maybe those are jumping off points to kind of give give you an injection, you know, a start off point. But um, afterwards, you just see what we can learn as other starting off alliances, because you guys already have two years on us or whatever, right? Well, I wasn't working for school. Yeah. All right, shifting. Yes. So now, I'm going to write about the other one. I think about the other one. Why? I know. He's <laughs> here. Yeah, he's here. He's not in this room, but he's down there. Yeah. Yeah, Valentin, yeah. He's downstairs, I think. He's down this room. I deal some here. Come here. How are you? I'm moving, I'm moving. Just look at the camera. Is that why you're doing it? See? I don't want to be in the middle. Meet Andrea. Alright. Because you're good looking. It's on. 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 Congratulations on your the move. All right, let's jump in. So the programs and services that the Latino Theater Alliance LA is able to offer is um, convenings. Um, we have the Writer Circle program, and then we on offshoot do um, workshops that people are able to offer. So the, the convenings the way that those came about was um, at, at first we held town hall meetings that traveled to the different Latino theater spaces that are operated by Latino companies, and then um, through that we we started to gather questions what people wanted to talk about. It was they, they were really open ended meetings and really sort of like took off in, in whatever direction the group wanted to take them and Kinan did a really great job of coming down to the Bay Area and, and planning for those and, and facilitating those. So um, we took a break from those because one of the questions that kept lingering was the kind of work that people were doing. So we were gathering together but we didn't necessarily know what themes people were exploring, um, what kinds of um, designers people were working with, like design aesthetics and all of that. So we, we formed a cohort uh, that had artists and scholars and administrator producers um, to go view a season of work and report back. So that's how we did our first convening that happened in 2013 um, and last summer. And, uh, and we had the report back and we'd let people you know, discuss the findings. And, and then we surveyed that group and we called the themes out and that's how we designed this year's convening. Um, which centered around LGBTQ themes, design. We created a, a space for designers to come together and, and talk, and non-designers to talk with them about the challenges of being a designer in the field. And um, TYA, theater for young audiences, and Spanish language theater. So just creating those rooms, and, and people on the steering committee were able to champion those rooms and, and design those conversations. So, and, and then next year, we're, we're um, gathering information to see what the community wants to talk about. So we, we sort of listen and then try to gather resources towards what people are asking for and what they need. So um, another result from the first year's survey is writers wanted a space to get together and write and explore whatever theme they wanted to, just to have their Latino identity be a given and then just play from there, right? whatever it was. And so that's how we developed the writers' team. Uh, over seven months, two sessions a month, um, they had 14 sessions total. And, and we would read pages. And Christina here is our facilitator for the writer circle. She's the dramaturg that's been helping them um, 
with their uh, plays. And we, we had eight, eight playwrights, and we had visiting artists come in once a month, about. Uh, Luis Alfaro came and visited, Evelina Fernandez, Alice Twan uh, from Hell Arts, and uh, Rose Portillo from About Production. So we, we had visiting artists come in, listen to pages, give feedback, and then give advice on, on you know, working in the field. And, and then the workshops, people on the committee, if an if actor or, or whoever is able to offer a workshop, will we'll help them with finding the space and, and getting the people and, and just putting it together. So it's very volunteer, zero budget, sort of, we're able to do what we do. So um, that's what we do. If you have a regional alliance we, and, and you uh, want to talk about how you came up with programs that, that are you're able to offer or have questions about how we do things, um, we can jump in. Okay. Um, really quick, and I, um, it's funny because you know, I can't really call it a regional alliance, but it sort of kind of was in Seattle. Um, was kind of, they said, yeah, she might have talked about it here in a live session, but they created, um, she created, she had this vision of creating regional auditions for Latinos because there's a, it's a very small pool in the Northwest, surprisingly. And, uh, no, not. And, um, uh, and so, and she also wanted people to be seen by other theaters that might not cast Latino. So she did a lot of work and contacted a whole bunch of directors, mostly in Seattle, and directors kind of in Oregon as well, and other states. And just basically just um, put it together and did it to send out the invitations and got some press behind it and got a bunch but of actors really on the issue and made it happen. So, it, I mean, it's, it's in essence, it's in essence yeah. like so it was regionally so minded, but driven by one person's vision and passion and energy and time to make it happen. So, sometimes it's about collaboration and sometimes it's just about one person going, I have this thing and I think it's going to be a benefit. <laughs> In San Antonio, we have an action committee that's made up of five uh, people that volunteer, it's all volunteer. And so what we do is then we, if we're going to be in the action committee, we commit to one month of programming. So the, depending on what the interest uh, of that particular person takes, like you said, the passion, you have to have a buy-in, or like a, uh, something that the community that we're going to address. So we've had uh, this past uh, year three play readings of new works. Uh, we had a finance workshop, which you know, I was like, a lot of us didn't want to sort of really talk about money, but it, it was like a really practical like session about money, you know, so, and then we had the play readings, we've had two separate models, one where it's sort of just like a pep rally for the playwright in terms of just having an audience and not really a critical feedback, and then another playwright wanted a more intimate critical response, so it was a more sort of invited sort of, and so we just helped to Yeah, we tried, we had a meeting, you know, with the passions of action yeah. members. So. We need someone to help us, like, Okay, so um, there was something. Uh, the budget thing, the, the conversation in, at LTA is is around like capacity and and the what the differences are between you know running a thousand dollar organization or a three million dollar organization or thirty million dollar organization. So that's something that we're looking to talk about. Uh, it's a big question, and a lot of information has to be gathered, I think, to to, to have that and. Uh, and it's, it's information that people hold close to, right? Um, how they run their business, personal. I have a question just for the group. Does anybody ever explore it in your different groups? Um, you doing like membership fees to allow yourself to have like working capital just for explorations? I don't know if there's, or is anyone, or do people like freak out when you like ask for like twenty five dollars for a year? You know, like is that something anyone's ever experienced or tried or failed or? The conference is something that we, we felt we were able to, you know, attach a fee onto just, you know, for, for booking a space or, or whatever and, and, and that's how we, we've been able to make like a little bit of working capital. It's very small. It's about a thousand dollars is what the sort of like we have. And um, we put it out there and we make it back. So the entry to a lot of these is like five dollars, ten dollars, something really no low and nominal, but so that people feel like so that they show up. If you sign up for a free thing, people don't always show up. So it's, yeah. it's sort of that sort of nominal thing. We're still fairly new, but in past organizations where there was no membership fee, when they tried to institute them, the push 
right here. 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 Yeah, and if you don't have a real strong plan on what the numbers you're going to say, you know, I'm not sure. But regarding your question on how to kind of have working, like, regarding your question about how to have money in order to try and do some of this work, uh, we recently uh, in the Bay Area have kind of found like a home, like Brava Theater has actually invited us to kind of use them as a home base so that we can go have our meetings there and one of the things we want to talk to them about is like that's great and they've even talked about possibly giving us some staff assistance to do admin work I think the conversation we want to have next is well what if we could write a grant together that way this position could be you know really funded and they could really do that work and drive things because we find even though we have a core group of people that are committed to making it kind of come together really busy and it's sometimes really hard to even get us to kind of do things <laughs> yeah yeah it's like for us it's bartering so like we produced a world theater day last year for the first time and so we've committed to make that happen again and we partnered with the community college and so now people another university asked us okay where are you going to do this this year you know and mm. consider coming to you know with us uh, so right now we're sort of shopping around and seeing what uh, venue might be a possibility. So the next step is, like you said, sort of trying to make sort of grant writing happen with that partner mm -hmm. in order to sort of, uh, since we're all volunteer and, you know, trying to make our own living and writing our own, you know, sort of making our work happen, that we need that sort of infrastructure. Yeah. And that's right where we're at, sort of at the cusp. It's really our team is very ad hoc, so everybody has their own jobs. Uh, we have people that work at CTG, I work at Red Cat, um, and people from the several theater co Latino theater companies around, Vila Kahlo or Bilingual Foundation of the Arts or the Latino Theater Company. Um, so we get together, this is like our like weekend or thing, we get together on Sundays, volunteer time, and, and whatever we can handle, we'll go for it. And, and so we don't, at the moment, we don't really feel like we need to constantly be programmed. Things. It's sort of um, when it feels needed, or when we feel like it, when we feel like we can execute it. And when those two meet, we move. Yeah. <laughs> That's time. <laughs> yeah. Such a yeah. So. Um, I'm interested in finding out if any alliance with Patricia. Should we open up the circles again? Wait, don't hold me first. <laughs> so if everybody could grab your chair and open up the circle to uh, a big circle. Big circle. <laughs> or an old long. Okay. <laughs> So in my group, the pr programming group, we uh, things that came up were institutional partnerships for acquiring space to, to uh, put on programs, um, and the membership fee thing came up. Um, passive memberships we felt didn't really work in, in any of our cases, 
but perhaps fees attached to a specific program, a specific, you know, like convening or a workshop or something of that way. So that's how we've been able to acquire a little bit of working capital uh, to, to um, operate. Um, very small, though, mostly. And a lot of it is it's all volunteer, right? So we all have our day jobs, and we, we take the time on our weekends or in the evenings to get together and, and put on what we've got. Um, writer Circle, our Writer Circle and El Samiro, also Chicago, um, is something that, that's coming up. Uh, and regional or, or auditions is something that several groups are also doing. Um, and I think that's what I want to report out of mine. Okay. Patricia? Sure. Um, so this is about connecting the regional alliances to one another and then also kind of pushing forward the story nationally. So I love what um, Carlos said about you know not losing sight of the face-to-face, -face, but there was a lot of person uh, technology uh, ideas which are fantastic. So maybe potentially not losing the face-to-face -face with a yearly conference for all the alliances to come together, but a monthly webinar check-in uh, where we can go to one platform and share live video conferencing. Um, also potentially with the conference idea, maybe because of travel, we do like a north. North one, we do our, our West Coast one, the East Coast one, so people wouldn't have to travel so far, happening simultaneously. Um, another really interesting idea that came up was this idea of scheduling like a Twitter talk or a, at one specific time every Thursday that's like moderated by the Latino Theater Commons, and so everybody participate in that. Um, if, in case people are not aware, we do have a quarterly email update by the Latino Theater Commons, so if you need to be added to that. Um, please do. And then um, also talking about websites for regional alliances, that every regional alliance should have a website that really tells people what they're doing and maybe we can pull funds, like Armando was saying with our little bit of fees, and get a web designer to help everybody build a website, that'd be great. Um, also having Latino theater industry nights, going to your local theater so everybody can see each other face to face. Uh, in, in your local communities, and maybe potentially also doing Skype meetups or broadcasting videos, right, of our meetings, because you never know what could spark interest for somebody else. So those are just some some really good kind of starting ideas that we had. So I'll pass it over to Jesus then. Great. Uh, thank you. So uh, unfortunately, that was so little bit of time, right? Mm -hmm. We could talk forever over drinks. Uh, <laughs> but I thank you for sharing. I want to say that hearing and listening to all of you, there's some sort of obvious uh, stuff that we all are working tirelessly to create our own networks. Uh, some of us are farther along, some of us are just starting, like two days ago I heard, or something to that, which is unbelievable. Just know that we all are a resource already, so don't, don't feel that you're in the dark, and don't feel shy about reaching out to me or the person directly across from you. I think we're, we're all here to support each other, uh, Latino, non-Latino. It's, it's about just uh, doing great work. So we are all on the same boat. As far as getting started, we all have to get started. And some of the things that I've heard that I love uh, is that many of you met over food, <laughs> right? You all went and ate and drank and talked and probably vented. So it's phenomenal, and that is not a scultu uh, culturally specific thing. I think we all love to eat, and so um, I love, yes, I love that, that so many of you have done that, and you came to together informally, and you had drinks, and you talked about what you wanted, what you dreamed for. Uh, so continue those conversations, and just make sure we um, count our points uh, while we're doing it. Porque somos bien dragones. Uh, infrastructure is very difficult. I heard somebody say infrastructure is very difficult. Uh, for which, who thinks infrastructure is very difficult? Raise your hand. It is difficult, but we have to do it. So uh, for, for those of you who have started, talk to some of us who are a little bit further along and ask us where we went wrong so you will not do it. You probably will. But just come to us and trust us. We don't want you. Infrastructure is hard, but we got to start somewhere. We need it if we want to, you know, we want to create a building to stand a lifetime or a pyramid. We need the foundation. So that's our infrastructure. Some of you said you meet bi monthly. Some of you have a goal of becoming a nonprofit. That's great. It's hard. 
Um, some of you said archiving is important. Thank you for saying that. I think, Isaac, you said that. Archiving, 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 writing, writing stories. We need to get it out. Uh, some of you are already doing it, and those of you who are not even the ones beginning, start. Okay, and they have to be good, good pictures. Tell, tell, uh, can raise the money when you go looking for money. Uh, some of you guys talked about it's all donations, you're all volunteers, you're working your day job, and then working on this. Duh. Uh, somebody called it a labor of love. Is this a labor of love? Raise your hands. See, it's a labor of love. Till death do us part. Um, some of us discuss this, this thing that we all get excited about what we're doing and then we start to realize there's really a core group. There's really a core, core, core group and that core group starts to take the lead. So do not be afraid to be part of that, co, uh, that, that leadership group, that core group. If people fall out, no se enojen, they will come back when they're ready. But you're ready so you lead it. That's what we're talking about, right? Uh, take the reins, don't get, don't get upset. Some of you have had town halls, writer circles, consortiums about training. Training was really important. Uh, informal workshops, original, original works. Somebody talked about working with a university. If you don't have a space, go to university and talk to them. They came around finally, right, uh, to, to, with you. So um, there are many spaces. I provided my space at Vistela Rev. There's a university, what's your university or college? Laredo Community College. Laredo Community College. Jesus Christ, Community College. <laughs> there are also are high schools, you know, where, what can we give back? Um, uh, social, social mingles, I love that. Somebody said they have a social mingle. Uh, you, uh, um, establish a core, uh, oh, finally. These are some of the great names I heard. Uh, Salta, Tia, Sol, Baltan, Alta, uh, Latino Commons, that's not really original. Uh, and LTA, LA, uh, but the names are phenomenal. Uh, so I thank you all very, very much. What are we doing now? No, so we, we want, obviously we only have 40 minutes for this session, so we tried so to be a little bit that. creative with our time, so I know it's hard for people to move. Um, but yeah, we wanted to just, until you have to go, we wanted to open the space for dialogue and conversation with each other. Yeah. Gina. I, just wanted, I just wanted to say that Cafe Onda is out there. Yes. To connect yeah. all of us. And it will be, be really wonderful if we can just yeah. challenge each other to actually send in one picture this month at my <laughs> theater. Mm. This is what's going on. You don't have to write anything. Right? Just send that picture. We need visuals. Oh. Just send it in. Thank you. Yeah. Or we talked Take about fun. maybe the alliance is also, if you create an alliance, do you just a paragraph profile and put it on Cafe Onda so people know you were out there? Three right. sentences. Three yeah. sentences. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go. Well, I'm uh, not really uh, I think so. along the lines of what NNPN does, a uh, base camp kind of talk that if you can participate, you're welcome to, but the fact that it happens monthly on a set date at a set time uh, and that the conversation is I am based and very easily just distributed to anybody on a list. So even if you don't participate or you can't make it that time, it's archived and it's just automatically distributed, would be great. Uh, and then also Twitter. I'm tweeting, I'll see a few other people tweeting. We can continue to tweet, use the same hashtags and then storify them. That's also a great way to instantly archive. And I'll have a hashtag, <laughs> Cafe Onda and Encuentro 2014. I was interested in exploring a regional encuentro, so we're here at a national encuentro mm -hmm. of, of sorts, right? Basically, that's what it is. So regional encuentros, one for each region, and some initiatives that um, individually we have done. Is it Teatro did a Northwest Latino Regional Theater audition, I think the first um, ever, and I, I think that would be a great national model, and I was talking to Café Onda about seeing if we can store a database of all these wonderful headshots of Latino actors to be able to share it with Latino and non and non Latino theaters regionally to really find a way to promote our young artists. And then, you know, there could be a playwright's 
page, whatever, but to be able to take on those really concrete initiatives. But I think in a, a regional encuentro, there could be workshops. There could not only be showcase of work, but also workshops and training. So that's what I'm interested in exploring that for the future. I know. See, two things. Uh, one is that what I was saying, the face-to-face -face, uh, in conference, but also to make the effort outside of conference to visit other people. And in, in that, on that track, and honoring our passion for food, which I share with you. got asada for me, said. I was about to say, I, you know, in an old Argentinian way, yo pongo la carne. <laughs> <laughs> I put the meat, you come. Yeah. With the wine, the bread, <laughs> meat and the, and the coals and the embers. Venga la granja. Uh, first, I want to just reiterate the, the importance for those of you who are starting alliances or, or um, are act actively working on those, those that currently exist, is finding a home base, whether it's with a theater institute affiliate or a university or a high school. Tre like, as someone who works for a larger institution, trust me when I say there's, there is at least one theater in most large area cities who, in some form or fashion, community engagement is a part of it. Audience development is a part of it, and or diversity is a part of it in terms of their mission. And if you come at it with some of these angles, it, it just looks good for these institutions. And, it, and having a home, I mean, we've, we've only been with Victory Gardens for the last eight months, but that, that the growth that our alliance has had within that short time span, it could not have happened had we not had a consistent place to meet. Um, and then the second thing I just wanted to say is recruitment was something we didn't talk about, but I think that's also important. As most of us are volunteer basis, and as all of us have very specific individual career goals and objectives, as you, as those of us who are in our leadership roles right now, will likely at one day leave. Just so, you know, our founders are off doing awesome and amazing things, and so recruiting younger Latino theater makers who are just moving to the cities, and that that implies like. Seriously making an effort, one of the big things, we just had our second town hall and something brought up was we need to, do, we need to have a better welcome hug for our young Latino theater makers because there's still a sense of like exclusivity among the Latino theater makers in Chicago. So what can we do to help people who are just moving, current college students within the universities in your cities, have them come, have them join because they're so like hungry to do something that like the the even just time make an internship program whatever you know totally, totally. Yeah. you're so that's great yeah. hashtag welcome hug <laughs> somebody else want to come this is just a um, this is a, this is a little bit less about regional a little bit more about national although I think it can have regional impact. Um, and I just wanted to invite everybody to uh, sign up to, for the Facebook page, the Latino, Latina Latino Theater Commons mm -hmm. Facebook page. It is a way to communicate across, just kind of put the call out, you know, so Northwest or Southwest or wherever, and just because there's a lot of people on that now that are just coming from all over and signing up, and you may reach that person that doesn't know what's happening and needs to connect, and Facebook is so ubiquitous, everybody, so many people are on it. Um, and if you aren't on the, um, the email list to receive information from the, 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 the quarterly report that um, uh, we've been talking about, uh, there's a box. There are boxes. There's two boxes. There's two boxes. <laughs> two boxes. And uh, the bo one is down in the vault where the big uh, historical display is, and the other one is by the information table where the sign up for dinner is. And there's index cards and just at the very least, put in the contact information there. So you can get on the email list, and please spread that word around. And then, uh, and if there's something in particular you'd like to address, you'll see there's kind of a list of things with four tenets. Um, uh, go ahead and put, write, write those comments down. So I'm just inviting Thank people to the national good. conversation. Okay. Okay. Right. So it's like, yes. now. Oh, we may have time. We'll go down there, and there's a reversal that starts in here, so we can say like a couple more comments. But if you think, I have to say to the women in the room, I also represent an organization known as Women of Color in the Arts. It's meant for women who are arts administrators. And we have a mentorship program meant for people like myself for a middle career who can mentor someone as well as we need mentors. Um, so at any point in your career, it's a national organization. 
Um, so if you're interested, come talk to me and pass it along. Tiffany, I signed up for that. I haven't heard anything. Maybe we yeah, meet every, uh, every uh, month. I signed up to be a Oh, that? Oh, no, no. That oh, we have been have it. Have it. Yeah, for sure. So we have to start a project. We're just collecting. Uh, right now, we're building the crawl out. You know what I mean? I'm just helping you remember. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Sign me up. We're going to do that every month. Can I eat some food? That truck will pull me 